in this video we'll be doing an overview of uh, cell division. So in this topic, uh, in this particular chapter, it's actually quite short. So the key focus is gaining an understanding of how a single cell can become um, uh, can become a multicellular organism like animals and plants. So we're going to do a quick overview in terms of how that process happens, but we're then going to focus a little bit more about the process of mitosis and also uh, what do we mean by differentiation and also stem cells. So let's start with a brief overview of the life cycle of an animal, let's say. So for example, in the beginning, we have two adults, a male and a female, and in the male, it releases uh, sperm cells. And the sperm cell would carry 23 chromosomes uh, instead of the 46 uh, chromosomes that we find in a regular uh, human cell. And similarly, for the female, uh, originally each uh, human cell would have 46 chromosomes, but then they would form uh, sex cells or egg cells, which contains 23 chromosomes as well. So it's halved the genetic information. And the purpose is that when they fuse together, we can restore the original number of chromosomes, which is 46, and that makes up the actual human being. Now we've got a term for sex cells. They're called gametes. So gametes have half the amount of genetic information or half the number of chromosomes compared to their uh, regular adult cell. So the gametes would fuse together during reproduction or sexual reproduction, and that process is called fertilization. And through fertilization, they form a single cell, and we call this a zygote. So a zygote would contain 46 chromosomes in this particular illustration because we are, like I said, restoring the number of chromosomes. And this particular zygote would then go on to become a full human being. Now the question is, how does it actually do that? So this single cell needs to undergo many times uh, uh, divide and many many times so it split itself up and cloning itself essentially uh, to become a ball of cell this ball of cell is called an embryo and the process of the zygote cloning itself is called mitosis which is a type of cell division that produces two genetically identical daughter cells. Now, later on, you will learn more about meiosis, which is a second type of cell division, and that's how uh, the adult cells a adults actually make the gametes, and that's uh, a cell division that makes four genetically different daughter cells, but that is something you'll learn later on in the chapter about reproduction. But for this video, we're going to focus a bit more on mitosis. So on that note, there are three key functions of mitosis. Number one it is for growth. In order for a um, for a simple organism to grow, and it, one of the key things is that it's actually gaining more cells. So mitosis, which is what cell division is, would allow growth to happen. Secondly, it also allows for any repair of damaged tissue. So for example, if you get hurt at some point in your life, you must have, um, the, the, the reason that wound doesn't stay there forever is because your cells are doing mitosis. It's there to make new cells to kind of replace the cells that were lost or damaged um, uh, when you got hurt. So mitosis is important for repair as well. It's also useful in asexual production. So asexual means it does not involve the fusion of gametes. So it doesn't involve two genetically different cells um, fusing together to make something completely different. In fact, one of the key things about asexual production is that it is an example of cloning or it's actually how cloning occurs. You are making a genetically identical copy of yourself. And that's how um, asexual reproduction occurs and that's through doing mitosis. Most animals do sexual reproduction, although there are some exceptions to it, but uh, plants and uh, bacteria or fungi uh, sometimes can also do asexual reproduction to clone themselves. Let's look at the details of mitosis. So let's say there's a cell that contains four chromosomes. So you can see I've used two different colors just to illustrate that we do end up with identical copies. But let's say the two come from the mother and the, uh, the two red one comes from the mother and the two blue ones come from the father. Let's say, for example. Now, bear in mind that we're trying to make genetically identical copies, which means that the resulting cell must have a copy of 
everything that was inside. So we need to duplicate everything. So that would include the DNA. It would also include all of the organelles inside. So there are a few things that happens. Uh, number one, the chromosomes would duplicate and also the cell size would increase because you need to split up into two smaller cells. So you need to grow bigger in the first place and all of the organelles gets duplicated as well. Now, to make it simple, we don't show the uh, organelles here, but let's focus on thinking about how the chromosomes will look like when they're duplicated. So you can see that each strand has duplicated themselves into two, so they're stuck together at this point, but then later on, we need to split them apart. So in order for us to make sure there's an even split, we need to line them up into the along the center of the cell. So we say the center of the cell or the middle of the cell, we call it the equator. So kind of like the equator around the earth. So it, alongs, it, it lines up along the equator. So the idea is when it splits, it's going to split evenly down the middle like this. So for example, those two chromatids uh, would separate. So the arms of the chromosome are called chromatids. So the chromatids, this arm would go that way and this arm would go to the other end. So they would start splitting up and travel to the opposite poles of the cell. So as it splits, this arm would go towards that side and that arm goes towards the right hand side pole. Same with the other ones splitting up like so. So this is what we call the separation of the chromosomes. And then once the chromosomes reach the ends, uh, the end pole bit, they will then start to uh, reform the nucleus and, and to protect all the chromosomes together again. And, um, and, and the whole cell splits apart, the cytoplasm and the cell membrane splits apart um, and they become two separate cells. And we call that process cytokinesis. So in this case, you can see those would be onto this side of the cell. Whereas the same would happen on the other side. Now notice that in this case, we made two cells that are genetically the same to each other. But if we zoom out a little bit, compare these two new cells to the original cell, they all contain two red chromosomes and two blue chromosomes. So we have gone back to the same number of chromosomes and the same types of chromosomes as we started. So mitosis results in cloning because they're genetically that the cells are genetically identical to each other, but also to the parent cell. There are a couple of crucial steps in mitosis. Let's go through them as a summary. First of all, the cell size would increase because you're trying to split yourself up into two cells and also all, everything inside the cell gets duplicated. So naming specifically chromosomes and the organelles would duplicate. The chromosomes would line up across the equator or the middle of the cell, as you can see in this particular cell here. And this is to allow that there is going to be an even split of the chromosomes, which is the third step. So the chromosomes were split up evenly, traveling to the opposite poles, like you can see in this particular cell here. And then finally, towards the fourth step, you got a split of the, uh, the cell into two uh, daughter cells. And we call the stage cytokinesis. The cytoplasm and the cell membrane splits apart. So the key thing to remember here is you have to say that there are two genetically identical daughter cells. Now, a lot of students tend to say forming two identical daughter cells, but the thing is, it doesn't emphasize the fact that it's the DNA that, they are, that is identical. So that is a very important point about mitosis, is about keeping the genes the same. So you must say forming two genetically identical daughter cells, or you can say that the two daughter cells have the exact same copy of DNA. That is also fine. But the key thing is you must mention that they have the same copies of DNA as each other as with the parent cell. This is going to be a very important point to illustrate, especially when it comes to uh, later on in your course when you start learning about meiosis as well. And that is a type of cell division that the, where the daughter cells are diff genetically different to each other. So it's really important that for mitosis, you emphasize that the daughter cells that are formed have the same DNA as the parent cell. So there you have it, which is the whole process of mitosis that is showing how every single cell is able to actually split itself up and make a copy or clone of itself through this process. 
Now, obviously, the daughter cells can go on to do their do mitosis by themselves, and you get to from two cells to four cells, four cells to eight cells, eight to sixteen, etc. And that is how we get in the case of reproduction. That's how we get、uh, from a single zygote into an embryo, which is a ball of cell. But keep in mind that. With as an embryo, it's just a ball of cells. But we are not just simply a ball of cells. We are made up of lots of different types of cells. We are made up of lots of、uh, specialized cells, like red blood cells, white blood cells, skin cells, muscle cells, your heart muscle cells, like lots of different things. So how can a single cell, like a zygote or an embryo,、uh, which are all genetically the same, how can we make all of these different versions? Or types of cells, and that is through the process of differentiation. So differentiation means the process where a cell becomes specialized or gains specific adaptations to allow it to do certain functions. So, for example, as I mentioned earlier, how a cell can become a red blood cell, white blood cell, a neuron, or in the case in plants as well, plants also have st-、uh, these cells. They can become lots of different things.、Uh, on that note, it's worth noting that.、Um, The cells in the embryo that are able to differentiate into any type of cell that they want to、uh, are called stem cells. So specifically, these are actually a very specific type. We call them embryonic stem cells. So embryonic stem cells can form any cell type, and that's why it's really good in terms of reproduction about making a brand new、uh, organism. Uh, but sometimes you can actually store some of the embryonic stem cells,、uh, especially if Um, we're going for IVF, in vitro fertilization. Like it、uh, is basically when we say the embryo is made inside a lab, we can actually extract some of the cells, or specifically the embryonic stem cells, and they can be used、uh, for cloning and for or potentially genetic therapy. Now, in the future, you might learn about cloning as well later on in the course,、um, but. This obviously is not allowed in human for human embryos, but we can actually do、um, we can make embryos in the lab for lots of different types of organisms like animals and plants, and actually that will be really helpful, especially if we want to make certain types of organisms with specific adaptations that we want to see.、Um, so we'll learn more about that in the future. But for now, just be aware that we can、um, have embryonic stem cells that can form any cell type. And also potentially, humans can also keep some of them to be used as cloning or for therapy use. But the reason why it is so good that they can form any cell type is because that's how we make a whole individual organism. And that, in a human case, we call it a fetus. So essentially, it's the scientific word for the baby before it was born. After the fetus is born. Um, obviously, they can carry on to grow through different、uh, through mitosis, and they will undergo further differentiation、uh, to form more different types of cells, and that's you know, you know that's part of growth. And we say that actually in humans, or sorry, in in any types of animals and plants, as an adult, meaning the moment it's out of the womb、uh, from the original parent, they also have specific types of stem cells. So we call these adult stem cells. Not necessarily because it is an adult. In the case for babies, that's not the case.、Um, but adult stem cells refer to、uh, types of stem cells that can form certain types of cells, but not all. So, in the comparison to embryonic stem cells, they can form any cell type. But for adult stem cells, they can form some types of cells. So, a very typical example for humans. Of animals, it's、uh, referring to the stem cells found in the bone marrow. So, in any long bones that you have in the bone marrow, they contain certain adult stem cells that can make the different types of blood cells, so like red blood cells and white blood cells. So, we retain that ability to do that even after we are already born. So that's why people with leukemia, which is a type of blood、uh, cancer, their bone marrow or their adult stem cells are not able to make. Or differentiate into different types of blood cells. One way to treat leukemia is by doing a bone marrow transplant, where you're moving some of these adult stem cells, healthy adult stem cells, from someone else and put it into the bone marrow of someone who is ill with leukemia, therefore giving though them those、uh, healthy adult stem cells to make new、uh, blood cells. 
So these are two types of stem cells that you need to be aware of for animals. So um, in exam questions, they often like to provide you with either a paragraph or a table looking at some information about different types of stem cells and how they might be used. And then the question, a very typical question would be asking you to evaluate the use of either both stem cells or some type of stem cells for a specific purpose, depending on how the question is uh, phrased. So they would require you to use information provided and some of your own understanding, which are the things that we just talked about, to kind of say what's good about using this type of stem cells and uh, why is it bad to use them. So that's what the evaluation question would be on. One thing people tend to ignore is that plants also have stem cells. Now. Be very careful though, uh, plant stem cells have, not, have nothing to do with the actual stem of the plant. That's not where they're found. So plant stem cells are as uh, same as what we have in animal, uh, animal stem cells. They can make any cell type. But the key thing is they uh, retain the ability to do this throughout their entire lives. So it doesn't matter. There's no concept of, oh, you're an embryo, so you have certain types of stem cells or whatever. They retain the ability to, to, to differentiate at any point within their life cycle. So that's why plant cloning is super easy to do because all you have to do is to cut bits of a plant out, put it in some soil with the correct nutrients. It can grow into a brand new plant. But the key thing is that you need to remember is where are they found? So they're found in a very specific place called the Mary stem. Now, the Mary stem can be found in various different places, uh, but specifically, they are found in the tip of shoots and roots. So specifically, the tip of it, not just any part of the root or any part of the shoot, that is where those Mary stem cells are found. And like I said, they are able to differentiate into any type of plant cell. So there you have it, that is the overview of cell division. So just to quickly go through this one, uh, the key focus for this chapter is perhaps the process of mitosis. They do, questions do like to ask you to describe the process of mitosis for three to four marks, which is, uh, which is um, as you can see, the four steps that we've illustrated about how organelles and chromosomes duplicate, cell size increase, chromosomes line up and then they split up evenly and cytokinesis splitting up the cell membrane and cytoplasm to form two genetically identical daughter cells. And that is the point of mitosis. But keep in mind that that is something that happens during um, reproduction. So when a zygote becomes an embryo, um, but also it carries on as any, as any organism grows, uh, animals, plants, or bacteria even, uh, they are all kind of relying on mitosis and cell division to kind of make more cells of the uh, of their own. Keep in mind though, there's one thing for bacteria we call we don't call that mitosis. We call uh, bi um, uh, bacteria producing binary fission. So that is a slight detail there that you will also come across later on when you learn about more, learn more about bacteria. But it, the process is essentially the same. They kind of separate, duplicate the chromosomes, and then separate. Um, another key thing to remember is uh, what are stem cells, which are cells that can differentiate into any cell type. We've got embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells. There are some slight differences between them, but also in plant, uh, we find the stem cells in the meristem and they retain the ability to differentiate at any point in their life. So that is cell division.